how do you stop eating and manage hunger on a one meal a day model. Ten of my best tips from my six years since losing 140 pounds. And we'll do it all on a hike. One. So wait, what if you don't want just one meal? So much of this advice applies to you. Implement a two meal, a three meal model. Make some changes to help you reach your long-term goals. There's lots of wisdom in here that's going to help you. And we have lots of people in the community implementing two meal models. In fact, as I record this, we are working on a specific type of two meal model that I attribute to my sister, Kimberly, who lost 15 pounds in one of our 30 day challenges with this riff on our ridiculously big salad, but in a two meal model. She took key concepts of satiation, bulk, flavor. She ate, she drew the line, and you can too. Two, it is helpful to recognize that you're always going to want to eat. You know, we're always looking for some sort of magic, looking for that switch that's just going to flip it off somehow. You hear about people saying, well, now I never crave that thing. <laughs> well, if that is you, that is great, and I congratulate you. And all the rest of us, you're always going to want to eat the thing. <laughs> Okay, and so as you craft your meal, you need to recognize that. We all want to be in the universe where we can eat anything at all without consequence. Gosh, would that be an amazing universe? And we are not in that universe. And so however you approach this, the one meal, the two meals, the three meals, all the six little meals, whatever you do, you need to recognize that you need to find some sort of boundary on that eating or you're gonna end up way up on that scale. Three, pining away. While you're eating, what are you pining for? Some other sort of food? I know I did that many times in the past. And when you're there facing really delicious, nutritious food that is going to help you meet your long-term goal, I want to tell you, if you start thinking about the most luscious, creamy, crispy, tasty thing on the planet, it will never compare. You guys, what if I spent my life just focused on the point that, gosh, I'm not as sexy and cute as Farrah Fawcett in 1975? What kind of quality of life would I have if that was my focus? <laughs> now, really. And that's kind of what we do with the food. If you don't like the flavor of the food, change the flavor. If you don't like the texture, change the texture. But don't ever get all sad that it is not a cinnamon roll or a pizza or a big bag of chips. If the food that we were eating were as sexy as Farrah Fawcett in 1975, the fact is we'd all be super fat. And you know, frankly, maybe some of that food is. Okay, almost. Eat, appreciate it, focus on your positive, vibrant future. Four. Honestly, one meal a day, two meals a day, whatever it is, if you're in a calorie deficit for an extended period of time, you are going to have hunger. However, I do find that with one meal a day, my hunger is really focused in that time of day that I tend to eat. I'm currently in day 11 of a calorie deficit and I am now about three hours from my meal. I was very hungry as I was sitting down to eat it. And now three hours later, and I will tell you 12 hours from now, if I start thinking about it a lot, I can 100% feel like I'm starving, okay? So it really becomes a mind game. Yes, if you focus on the hunger, if you think about, gosh, I feel some hunger, and you keep thinking about it, you're gonna be more hungry. That is why you need the activities, the other things to do. And when you feel that hunger creeping up, brush it aside, move on, do other things. Don't cultivate the thoughts about it or you will feel hungry. So basically in a calorie deficit, I feel mildly hungry all the time. I could feel ravenous. I could feel like I want to eat my arm off if I start thinking about it, if I start thinking about it. And so what is the strategy? Stop thinking about it. <laughs> Five. This is a real game changer. The hunger, the snacking, when you just want a snack, you give in today, tomorrow's gonna be harder. When that time of day comes around tomorrow, your body's gonna say, it's time to eat, and you are gonna struggle. Keep the boundary in place, it makes it easier, not harder. Six, an eating framework, a formula for success, a way of eating every single day that will drive your weight loss and your long-term health goals that you know so well, you can whip it up in minutes, and you're always prepared on a bad day, you wake up, you're eating in that formula, in that framework. This has been a big point of success at Eat Like a Bear. We have a very formulaic way of eating. It allows all sorts of flavors and textures. It allows different types of meals. But in fact, it is formulaic. 
your very favorite recipes, you may be able to whip up blindfolded. Why is this critical? First, the thing that you eat every single day does need to drive your weight loss if you are overweight, and it does need to support your long-term wellness. And the fact of the matter is, we will give in to the drive through and other conveniences, especially on those bad days, if we don't have a plan. And that is where the daily consistency just gets whittled down and all of this gets so complicated. Let's make it easy, guys. Find a framework that works for you. I teach the Ridiculously Big Meal Framework in the Recipe Finder app. We are increasingly putting more meal types for two meal models, even for three meal models, following this key philosophy of having a food framework that works for you. Seven, you need to end your eating. Think about the meal itself as a tool all the little components in the meal as a tool. And so I lean hard into vegetables. They are lower in calorie, they bulk you up, they help bring the meal to an end for me. If I feel like I'm not satisfied with my meals, that's one big thing I'm ratcheting up. But there are other things in the meal. Meals with apple cider vinegar will probably bring you to satiation faster. Meals that are highly seasoned, spicy, will help. You may find that adding a little bit of protein helps as well. There may be components in your meal that make you want to eat more. This is what comfort foods do to us. And you need to analyze what you're eating through that lens. Is it making me want to eat more? Then it's making my life harder, not easier. This is a big part of what I do with the Ridiculously Big Meal Framework and all of the meals in the Eat Like a Bear Recipe Finder. Eight, consider meal ending rituals. The rituals that signal I am now done eating. End your meal with coffee. End your meal with a seltzer. All those bubbles will fill your stomach up even more. Brush your teeth. Dance around, do a ritual dance. Nine, and this is so important and not at all obvious unless someone tells you as you're eating. Appreciate the goodness that is that meal. The flavors, the textures, this is good. And it is helping you meet your long-term goals. But in that second part of the meal, especially as the meal is coming to an end. And remember, this is not the time to think about what the meal is not. It is not the time to think about all the comfort foods that got you up on the scale to start with. This is the time to think about what you are about to do with the rest of the day. If you are about to go and knit, maybe you are looking through knitting magazines. Maybe you're looking at different colorways. You're turning your mind to that project, appreciating that project, bridging yourself, your heart, your mind, into the thing that you're doing next. You're full, you're satisfied, you draw the line, you put your whole heart and soul into that next project. Get in it, get in it deep. 10. Bring your eating to an end with intention and focus. It's what I'm doing out here today. I ate and now I'm out here on this hike. I suppose I could be knitting, solving crossword puzzles, playing Sudoku. There are many opportunities in the world to do things besides eating. However, finishing that eating requires strategy and focus. So many people come to me and say, once I start eating, I cannot stop. And I say to them, I believe you and I believe you because you just told me. And so if you know as you start to eat that you are not going to be able to stop, I absolutely expect you won't be able to stop. But what if instead you begin your meal and you're already strategizing about not only enjoying it, getting those nutrients, getting those great flavors, but also thinking about what you're going to be doing next. What if in the process of enjoying it, you use special strategies that work very well for you, that you've already discovered work for you to bring that meal to an end? Maybe the meal will have certain components in it. Maybe you'll have certain rituals to end it. But you must be mindfully preparing for this meal to end, including what you are doing next. And that is the key magic behind a one meal model or a two meal model where you're not snacking in between and you're not snacking after you eat. You go be awesome. Maybe you eat again. You go be awesome. You have a plan because you're ending the eating. You're ending it because you're satisfied and you're ready to move on to those other parts of the day. 